As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered him, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work with the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming, then no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When Jesus had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread it on the mud on the man's eyes. Jesus said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. But he kept saying, I am the man. And they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? The blind man answered, The man called Jesus. He made mud. He spread it on my eyes and said, He said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. And then I washed and I received my sight. And they said to him, Where is he? And the blind man said, I don't know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he received his sight. And the man said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened, he said. He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight, and they asked them, is this your son who now can see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But we don't know how it, it, it but we don't know how it is that his eyes are open. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. You see, his parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah, would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So, for the second time around, they called the man who had been blind. And once again, the Pharisees said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. And the man answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, I was blind, now I see. The Pharisee said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And the man answered them saying, I have told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they were reviled and saying to him, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses. But as for this man, we don't know where he comes from. The man answered, He is an astonishing thing. You don't know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who never sins. And never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sin, and you are trying to teach us? And they drove the man out. 
Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when Jesus found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And the man answered him, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. The man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to, to the Pharisees, If you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now that you say, We see, your sins remain. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So Tuesday, I met with uh, my Lutheran colleagues, and um, we discussed this piece of scripture, as we do when we gather. And everybody was telling each other what they're preaching on. And uh, most of them said, well, of course we have to preach that Jesus is the light of the world, and those who are blind will see because of his light. And then there was your pastor who said, uh, I'm preaching on ordinary things made holy. Uh-huh. Okay. What else are you going to preach on? <laughs> I said, uh, well, I'm thinking I'm going to preach that uh, Jesus loves us. Because it's right there in the scripture. Okay? So, your unconventional pastor is going to offer you this. We start with the reading. As Jesus walked along, he saw a blind man, a man born blind. The disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, his mom and dad or his parents? Because, you know, he was born blind. And Jesus said, you know what, neither of them were Sin. We're sinning. We're sinners. Have sinned. He said, God made this man blind so that God's work could be done here on earth so that others may see. So, Jesus took his very own ordinary spit, patooey, and picked up some very ordinary dirt and made very ordinary mud. And then he came to the blind man saying, I wipe this upon your eyes. Now go to the pool of Siloam and wash away the mud. And the man went and washed and came back and was able to see. I think that's pretty cool. How does the ordinary things in our life become extraordinary, become holy? How did spit from a mouth and dirt from the earth and a pool of just water make a blind man see? How does ordinary tap water filled in our baptismal font stop being Niobrara water and becomes holy? How do the ashes that are placed on your forehead on Ash Wednesday become holy. They are ashes from a dead palm. A palm we bought online and had mail here. How does all those things become holy? <clears throat> well, I'll tell you, it's not from anything I learned in seminary that gave me superpowers <laughs> and everything I touch becomes holy, thank heavens. But what makes things holy is what I learned in Sunday school. And that was that Jesus loves me. And because Jesus loves us, everything that we do on his behalf, on God's behalf, becomes holy. 
That holy water in the baptismal font is only holy because it does the work of God. That's what makes that water holy. Not my little hand going in there and not the precious child of God that it's being sprinkled on, but it's the work that that baptismal water does and will continue to do in those children is what makes that holy. That spit and that mud and that pool became holy things because they were used to show God's work in this world. That's what makes things holy. That's what makes us ordinary children of God extraordinary and holy. It's the work that we do. Not for us, not for Faith United, but for the work of God. So that God's children all over the world will hear of his love and grace and mercy. They will hear of his forgiveness. Because still too many people believe, as the Pharisees believe, if you are afflicted, you must have sinned somewhere. And that, my friends, is why you are the way you are. That's what they believed in Haiti. Happened when that earthquake shook it to its knees. That was a sinful sin. So God showed them. My friends, that is not true. And this tells us that. The earth shook because the earth shook. Because there's all kinds of naturey things going on that I can't explain to you that made that earth shake. They were not sin-filled people. And we need to let all of God's children know that if you were born with a crooked nose and an eighth finger, it's not because you sinned somewhere. It's not because your parents sinned somewhere. It's because your differences will show the work and the miracle of our Lord Jesus Christ through God. Will that eight finger person do something spectacular? He just might one day. And then we'll all hear about it. We see our servicemen and women coming back with our arms and legs. They do miraculous things. It doesn't stop them. And we shouldn't be stopped because we believe that's what, what that what is in us is ordinary, and so therefore we can't do anything. But that's so not true. We can make elephant toothpaste out of ordinary things. We can do anything. We can do anything. The second thing that I saw that I told them I was going to preach on as Jesus loves us is from this part of that scripture. And the Pharisee said to the man, you were born entirely in sin, and you are trying to teach us. What the heck? I don't think so. And they drove him out of the city. And Jesus heard about that, and he cared and loved so much for that man that Jesus went looking for him. Yeah, he doesn't love us, does he? He didn't care about that man, did he? No, so he got yelled at. Oh, well, not my problem. No, my friends. Jesus loves us so much, he went looking for that man. And when he found him, Jesus said to him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And the man answered, And who is the Son? Tell me, so that I might believe in him. And Jesus said to him, You have seen him. And now you speak to him. And the man who once was blind said, Lord, I believe. <clears throat> That's how much God loves us. He goes looking for us.
You love your children. When you go to a carnival, you might get separated, and oh my stars, how scary is that? Do you just keep going to the venues and get some cotton candy and candy apple and ride the Ferris wheel and then puke and then go look for your kids? No. You see that your child is missing and you drop everything to go find that child. Jesus dropped everything to go find this child of God to let him know how much he is loved and who he is loved by. That's beautiful. That is such a huge blessing to us that I literally cannot put it in words. There are no words for that section of scripture that I shared with you because it is extraordinary love. Love beyond the grizzly mama bear. Way beyond. And that's what that young man felt when Jesus went looking and found him. Don't you just want to say, wow? Wow. 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 <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> Amen. <laughs>